Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Coaching, we're all, all, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. Well, happy game day, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is game day, and the Dallas Cowboys have the bye week. Thank God, maybe we will actually regroup and try and get ourselves together. Uh, we will be here live streaming all day today uh, starting out one o'clock we know we have the Eagles versus the Giants and I'm hoping that the uh, <laughs> Giants take care of the Eagles and bring them back down to earth or actually bring them a little closer down to earth and then we've got the commanders going against the Carolina Panthers I'm sure that they're gonna take care of business on that one so that's where we are to start uh, to start, excuse me, to start the day. Our Cowboys, on the other hand, we have all kinds of crazy stuff that are going on. But before we get to that, uh, we do have breaking news that the Jets have worked out a deal with Hassan Reddick where they are going to waive the $12 million in fines and bring him into the fold. So in a week where the Dallas Cowboys were literally listening to Jerry Jones saying that you can't bring in more talent, the Jets, of course, got Devontae Adams and finally got Hassan Reddick added to the fold. We saw the Buffalo Bills add Amari Cooper and the Cowboys, well, crickets. Crickets is what we got. Absolutely nothing. Um, the good thing, at least, is we got a chance to hit the pause button. And I'm going to actually say I'm happy that everything came out in the open. Because unless you know that there's a problem, you can't fix it. And maybe the fact that we got blown out and mollywopped the way we did is a wake-up call for people to realize this season is slipping away. That everybody, I mean everybody, from Dak Prescott to um, everybody but the kicker, needs to step up. That the guys that are injured, we need to get back. The coaches got to call better plays. The Jerry Jones, well, uh, you got an hour, I can tell you what Jerry Jones needs to do. Be that as it may, we have to get ourselves together. Now, what is possible is today that the Giants beat the Eagles, which will help keep a log jam. Um, Washington, I'm pretty sure, will beat Carolina, but I'm not sure that we really know what Washington is because they have been beating the lowest of the low, although they barely beat the Giants. So there's room to be able to catch those guys if we can get our shit together. But make no mistake about it. Right now, we are in hell and we are in a mess. And it starts out from our lines. The Joneses were, taught, were tasked with trying to do something to get a better result on the offensive line and the defensive line. And thus far, it hasn't worked out. In my mind, I believe what they ultimately need to do is they need to put their best player at left tackle. I don't think they'll do that. I think they're going to put Tyler Guyton right back where he was, and unfortunately, we're going to have the growing pains. Terrence Steele was a situation where they paid him with an ACL, and I'm not sure that we're going to get much better than where we are right now, um, which unfortunately is bad because it was an $82 million contract. I really believe what we need to do is we need to put Tyler Guyton over at the right side and let him start working his way into the lineup there. 
Now, as far as the running game goes, um, it was funny because yesterday um, I was doing some different things and all that, and I came to the party late about Alvin Kamara. There was a report out there that six teams had contacted New Orleans about trading for Alvin Kamara. The list was Dallas, the Chiefs, uh, Denver, Bengals, Bills, and the Chargers. And so those videos and those reports and stuff on Twitter had come about three or four hours before. And I think it was Ernie, the uh, Cowboy fan, had posted, um, you know, that the Cowboys had contacted uh, New Orleans about Alvin Kamara and had a link. I clicked on the link and the link was unavailable. <clears throat> and then when you started looking at uh, Twitter, Alvin Kamara was basically denying that he requested a trade and that there was no news on it. And it turns out there was no news on it, that that was fake, a fake tweet, fake report. It's since been deleted. And so at the moment, there's nothing there. I, I was going to be honest and say it would be ridiculous if you're the – see, here's the problem with the Cowboys. Everything is imaged that – we have a plan, and we don't deviate from it. For the Cowboys to have traded back for Mari Cooper would have been, especially if they had paid a third-round pick, would be admitting that they screwed the pooch and then had to pay even more for it, which was a not, not, not starter. To go through and trade for a running back, even though Jerry Jones said he's seen teams trade for running backs in the middle of a season, first of all, looks stupid because trading for a running back when you could have had um, Derrick Henry makes no sense, especially in the middle of the season. And so for them to be looking allegedly at getting trading for Alvin Kamara, it's kind of like you're giving up draft capital and money. No, I think the reality is the Cowboys are not going to do shit at the trade deadline. They're just not. This team is going to win or die with what we have right now. And that's the bottom line. And so what we need to do is we need to get these guys to have caught their breath and hope that we can get some of the defensive players back on the field and maybe, just maybe, catch the San Francisco 49ers at a bad time. San Francisco, 4 o'clock, plays Kansas City, which you know is going to be a physical game. Um, Christian McCaffrey, who has not played this year, San Francisco is getting low on running backs, which is probably good for us. And maybe if we get Deron Bland back and we get Celan Carson back, maybe we'll be better against their wide receivers if we can make them one-dimensional and we get Micah Parsons back. But uh, Christian McCaffrey, his wife tweeted out that basically Flipper is back. He's back in the pool swimming and is trying to push towards playing against the Cowboys. And so there's our storylines for today. Oh, and Russell Wilson will make his debut as the Steelers starting quarterback tonight on Sunday Night Football against the Jets. So I'm looking forward to today, see what we're going to see, and um, hopefully, hopefully this week the Cowboys get themselves together. My final hope is that all of the negativity, all the things that were said from, you know, Troy Aikman talking about <clears throat> routes that are run lazy and, you know, people talking about, you know, I think it was Nate Newton was talking about the offensive line and how bad they played, that those guys will take it inside with a sense of pride and turn that around and make liars out of everybody else. So I'm going to finish this off this morning. i got to go check a hot water heater. There's no hot water uh, for my sister-in-law. And so I'm going to keep this a little bit short. But I just want to end with this. Troy Aikman <laughs> was on uh, local Metroplex radio today. 96.7 the ticket. Okay. And um, did he threaten anybody's jobs? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. No, no one's losing their job. <laughs> well, I mean, he's um, maybe the receiver coach or the or, or of the Dallas Cowboys or the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys because he just did not mince any words about what he sees on tape from the receiving core and the routes that they are running to try and support Dak Prescott and get some points on the board. I think the routes are terrible. 
Uh, I think they run terrible routes, and uh, and I thought that beyond this year. And I think CD's got to improve in his route running. And as a quarterback, uh, if you're not certain where guys are going to be uh, consistently, it's hard. It's hard to play the position. And uh, and so that's that's what I see. I see. I see guys lazy coming off the line of scrimmage. Sometimes they sometimes they run. Usually, if they do, it's because they're anticipating they're going to get the football in that play. But if they're not, they don't, and it all ties together. And so, uh, I'm not impressed with that part of it. Um, I, I just finished watching the Baltimore Ravens because I have them this week. You put on a film of theirs and watch their receivers run routes, and uh, and they come off the football, and uh, so do San Francisco's and and uh, Green Bay's and and others, but. Uh, it's 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 hard to play the position if you're not certain how guys are going to run routes or where they're going to be. And 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 I'm not speaking for Dak. Dak may say, "Hey, I think everything's amazing." But as a former quarterback watching it, it's got to get a lot better. Yeah, I mean, it's not just D- Troy and Dallas saying, "I'll hang up and listen with your answer." That's that's, that's Troy friggin' Aikman saying yeah. that. He has cachet to I say these mean, things. God, Lord. It, he's calling out C.D. Lamb too for being not as disciplined in the route running. Well, that happens when you miss the entirety of training camp. I mean, That's you know, true, dude. Yes. <sighs> they got to get healthy in this bye week, and they got to get right. And who's going to be the one to tell them to get right? Is it the sixty million dollar quarterback? Is it the the owner? He's handing out all this stuff. Is he the one who's going to tell him to get right? Because that doesn't really sit very well if he's going to just, I mean, this isn't like major league, you know, where the owner goes strolling in the locker room. (laughs) Well, you know, well, I don't know. I think our owner does go strolling. I don't think he goes in strolling in the locker room. He does after the game, but I don't think he goes in during the week during practice and says, let's call everyone together and say, get your your damn act together. Would it surprise anyone listening to your voice right now if that were the case? I don't think he does that. Get your damn act together. I don't believe. I don't believe he does that. Who's, is it McCarthy? Is he going to just. Because I'll tell you what, his his job is 100% on the line. Oh, no doubt. I think it's hmm. the two guys on the defense that aren't playing right now. They seem to be the vocal leaders. No tank. But did no you go up and say, run your routes better? I, look, I, mean, I, I think offense has the whole defense accountable and vice versa. I think it's I Dak. Assume. It's got to be Dak. It's got to be the quarterback. Certainly if it's a route running situation, that he, Dak must know it. If if Troy's seeing it on film, I'm telling you, man, the eye in the sky does not lie. I love listening to Kurt Warner talk about the film he sees, and he just like lays it out the same way it, they. Kurt, when he talks about film and what he sees on film, what he thinks a quarterback is seeing or not seeing, or what route runners are doing or not doing, he sounds exactly like Troy Aikman just sounded. That that is 100 percent the unvarnished truth. Well, those are Hall of Fame from, QBs. From, uh, they right? are indeed, yeah, you know, who are also out of you know what's to give. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I mean, I, I believe Kurt's I w- out of darns to yeah, give. Yeah, I wouldn't but, say Kurt. You're would right. Think so, that way. <laughs> but you know, uh, on, know, honestly, like who's gonna? Somebody's got to do that in the bye week, coming out of the bye week. Well, that person should be CD, right? It, it no, should, it's it's got to. Well, I mean, it's got to be QB. the quarterback. It's yeah. got to be. Uh, Dak Peter. Prescott. He's there. He's not going anywhere. He got his contract. He's got to go, and if it is a route-running situation, he's got to go to these receivers and say, if it breaks off at five, you break it off at five on a dime. If it says something what I need you to be at and you're not there, I don't care how many Pro Bowls or commas you have in your contract. you got to be there. Mm-hmm. And C.D. Lamb wears 88. He knows that. Yeah. I'm wondering how this is going to sit from Troy because I'll tell you what, him going on radio and saying this I think is going to be more of an impact than than – Jerry Jones I would hope threatening so. the jobs of two local radio hosts because they're actually there questioning you know. his general managing ability, which generally has not been good <laughs> since the, the calendar turned. <laughs> to say man, the least, oh man, oh man. Week good. seven. Where did this come from? Week seven, it's no... Am I wrong? Is it never really like this in week seven? No, 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 It's usually no, no. like the week 12, week 13. Right. Uh, Early uh, in mid-October. Yeah, like, the, the lid's on the pot a yeah. little sooner. Yeah. A little sooner. Unless we're just recency bias. I don't know. I don't know. A little hot. I feel like every year we say, like, I've never seen this happen. And every year the NFL just gets crazier and it sure crazier does. and crazier. You got the script? I do. <laughs> TJ, you should have known. Oh, it's there it re- is. It's really why you, you notice know. I haven't been very surprised by a lot of oh, that I'm God, seeing because guy. I have the script. That's why he's all on, on the yeah. mat. Saying. TJ's arts and crafts, everybody. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3. Yeah, but.
that he's 100% right, man. Who's going to be the one to tell them their ass? Um, this is what's crazy is uh, when you think about the ineptitude of the Cowboys, rushing yards per game, we're 32nd. Yards per carry in the NFL, 32nd. Quarterback hurries allowed, we're number one. Quarterback pressures allowed, we're fourth. Average target separation, we're 30 seconds, dead last. And points allowed per game, we're third. I don't know how the hell we won three games. I'll be real with you. Let's be realistic here. We stink up the place right now. It, 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 it stinks from the rooter to the tutor. And it's... It's, it's got to change. And this is where there are no reinforcements coming. There's nobody coming to save us. We're not going to sign a whole bunch of players that are going to come in and make a difference. This is it. We got to man the hell up, suck it up, and do the best we can. All right, good people. I'll see you in about two hours uh, for a day full of football. That doesn't include the Dallas Cowboys.